Lead Act 2022, we have a wonderful opportunity to discuss critical materials and how the supply chain process is evolving here in North America. So, Claudia, we're going to start with you with Kodiak Copper because Byron King told us yesterday that copper is the place to be. Can you tell our audience one reason why everybody needs to have Kodiak Copper on their watch list? Well, copper, there's a very big demand on the horizon driven by the green revolution, energy transition. All those technologies that underpin this transition are very copper intensive. Electric vehicles need three, four, five times more copper than a conventional vehicle. Story is very much the same for solar, for wind. So no question, lots of copper demand on the horizon. And on the other hand, not very much supply at all. At this time, the supply pipeline of copper projects actually being developed is at an all time low, not much coming on. So yeah, you can see a big supply gap opening and more copper needs to be found. And that's what Kodiak's business is about. And on this particular panel, we have, of course, nickel. Nickel, yes. CBC was telling me yesterday that nickel was the place to be. I had a, a professional from Man Manitoba telling me that Manitoba and, and nickel are best friends. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think that politically, we have to discern where we want to explore. And I think Canada's great. I think Labrador's great, where we are. Quebec's great. I Traditionally, Manitoba has been great. I mean, we have Thompson, Manitoba, huge uh, producer of uh, nickel historically. Valley's there big, big, in a big way. But there's an issue. We, we certainly had an issue because we had tremendously good properties in the Thompson area, but we had a hard time getting a drilling permit. So they, I, I believe that they have some work to do to really unlock the nickel that they have. And they do have nickel there. And of course, that's Jamie. He's with Fjordland. Fjordland Exploration. Fjordland Exploration, yeah. Fjordland Exploration. So I'm going to jump here now to Terry Lynch, who is Power Nickel. And of course, you can talk about nickel, but you have to answer the same question. Manitoba and nickel. What do you think? You know what? Honestly, I really don't know a ton of about Manitoba. Uh, I haven't done any work in the province, so I, I wouldn't be able to give a lot of insight. But you can give insight into why CBC was telling me yesterday that nickel better be in my portfolio. Well, I mean... I mean, nickel, you are power nickel. Yeah, no, so I mean, I can, like that, that one I can answer very easily. I mean, basically what drives nickel is two things. Uh, urbanization and electrification. So as, you know, you know, third world, second world becomes more urbanized, they have, you know, uh, more homes, more urban density. They're buying fridges and stoves and cars. That's all stainless steel. So stainless steel is like 7% of the nickel demand. So it's growing at like 6% a year. So that, that's a big driver, it's really underpinning to the nickel market. And then of course electrification, the green energy movement. Uh, you know, right now it's probably you know, six, seven percent, but it's gonna grow to fifty. So it's just not enough nickel out there. So that's why everyone's saying you know, getting nickel. We sort of believe that's a good spot to be. And Karim, of course, I'd like to just say thank you for doing such an amazing job. Karim is with Metalla, and uh, of course you're on the board for PDAC. Yes. Uh... And I'm going to put you on the same spot I just put Claudia, which is why Metalla? Give us one good reason why I need to be watching Metalla on my watch list. Yeah, so Metalla is also focused on base metals, like all these other great companies with great projects. We have uh, the zinc, um, zinc and copper mine that we're trying to open, so it's very close to production with all the infrastructure in place. But um, talking about you know electrification and how the base metals come into play, you know copper obviously is very very important. It's going to not only go into you know the infrastructure but everything around it. Um, nickel same way. Nickel and zinc are actually very similar in what they do in that sort of sense. Um, like solar panels, uh, wind turbines are all coated with zinc. There are zinc air batteries coming into play that uh, cheaply and effectively store energy with no permits required to transport them because they don't combust. So a lot is happening on the zinc space. We have the probably the highest grade um, zinc development projects uh, in North America, with you know goes back to what you mentioned, you know, tier one jurisdiction, the political de-risk um, with all the other projects in Canada, you know. 
So I think it's a great time for all these base metals, really, to be honest. So, of course, I always love talking to companies and really putting them on the spot. So we've got high-grade zinc. Is that not what you just said? That's right, yeah. Okay, high-grade zinc. It's your turn, Jamie. What do you have that nobody else has? Well, I think we have the same thing, high-grade nickel. I mean, at least that's what we're looking for. And, you know, the project in South Boise Bay, for example, it's, it's, an, it's sort of very similar to Boise Bay itself, 2% two, two plus nickel uh, deposit, massive, world class. The only thing, they've done exploration for 25 years around, and the only analysis, uh, similar deposit is the South Boise Bay area. And they did drill 12% nickel over a meter. Now, at the time, it was in the Abitibi area north of us, um, and so it's trying to figure out where else do we find that type of grade. But we're re really looking for uh, one and a half to two percent nickel. And our Renzi deposit in Quebec, similar, one and a half percent, was mined in the late 60s, early 70s. And you know, we want to see that kind of number. Uh, massive sulfides, high grade nickel. Um, and, and we'll find a home for that, for sure, in Canada, if we can find that type of deposit. So, lately the news, we've got Ford, GM, on committing to becoming 100% electric. Ontario government, of course, has made a commitment for a $4.98 billion investment in the critical material supply chain, with everyone saying we're going electric. But of course, in my survey during PDAC 2022, very few CEOs in the critical materials sector have confessed to having a hybrid car and or an EV car. So let's go to Terry Lynch with this. Terry, do, are they going to be able to achieve these goals? Jack Lipton tells me no bloody way. I don't think so. I mean, uh, I think we'll all have to be a bit more practical. Even Elon Musk is saying you're still going to need oil and gas for a while. So I think it's going to be a lot longer than people think. But, I mean, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have uh, rampant uh, demand for the EV industry and for all of our base metals. Um, you know, it, it's sort of a, it's one of the, those challenges, I think, is like if nickel goes ahead to $20 a pound, that's probably going to slow the market down. So we, we have to sort of, uh, we, we need increasing commodity prices to be able to produce these things, but we don't need them to get out of hand because if, that, if they get out of hand, they'll actually destroy the market they're trying to create. So there's got to be like a happy medium there. And, and I think that's going to be, you know, that's when you see these forecasts for 11 times demand for nickel. Well, it's probably not going to be 11 times demand, but it could be three times demand. And that would be huge for the nickel. <laughs> we could be very happy with that, you know, as a nickel producer. So. Well, we're trying to slow down expectations out there in the investment community. However, with this demand, it allows critical materials to be a great place for investors to hedge their bets during a corrective market. Claudia, do you want to comment about the need for copper in the EV market, or do you feel that the demand is from other places? you want to comment as a copper expert uh, what you see happening? And I know you're an investor as well. Talk to us. But copper is often called Dr. Copper because it's very much of an indicator of, of economic health, economic growth, because it has so many different uses. And if you look at the energy transition, Copper is in electric vehicles, it's not only in the battery, it's actually a lot in the in the motors, it's in all the wiring, it's in the charging infrastructure. So there are lots of different uses, very broad variety. And that's why there is, in my mind, no doubt that um, there will be huge demand. At this time, 80% of the world economy is on a net zero carbon target so this is a real mega trend and the last mega trend that had a real impact on commodity markets and drove commodity demand was China in the 2000s that was one economy albeit a very big one whereas here we're really looking worldwide so I think this is a massive mega trend and we will see elevated commodities demand and prices for a long period of time well we all have to love that mega trend <laughs> Jamie, I can feel you wanting to respond to that. Would you like to add anything? Well, I agree. It's, uh, with the metals that we're talking about, copper, nickel, zinc, um, any of the base metals, anything that goes into what we need to fulfill this demand are going to do well. But as Terry says, we have to be cautious about prices getting ahead uh, of, of the market. Right now, nickel at 12 bucks, copper at 420. 
great pricing. I mean, we should, if, if we have a deposit, that's economic for us. I mean, we, we shouldn't be wishing for, as, as you're saying, 20 bucks or something like that, because it'll tear down uh, what we're trying to build up. And we saw that, and we have, Rare Earth has a great history lesson for this. We saw the prices explode to record levels. Everybody had a potentially economic deposit, and now we have nothing. And we saw demand erode with small magnets for car parts and everything. So we have to be, you know, we're in a great shape right now. We have problems with, you know, worldwide economy right now, but we're in the right spot, right? Because we know that even in an inflationary market, these commodities are, are going to do well because we have to, because they're required for what the world is saying they want to do and where they want to go. So politically, you know, it's going to push us in the right in the right direction. Our job is obviously to be finding the mines and developing them. Um, but with these t type of prices that we have right now, should be no issue. And, and of course, Karim, I'm absolutely certain when we start talking about geopolitical impact stocks, I mean, this is an interesting sector where a conflict between two nations, as we've all seen, can drive stocks northward. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Absolutely. I mean, it goes back to, you know, being in tier one jurisdiction to fuel the green economy with these critical minerals. So what Canada did, as well as the United States, coming up with this critical mineral strategy, or the list at least is a start, is a fantastic way to do that. We need to find more. The copper production is slowing down around the world. The mines are depleting. It's a depleting business. We have to find more. So that's where the exploration companies come in. Zinc, huge, huge, like, depletion of you know, assets around the world. So many mines are coming into closure by 2025 around the world. And on top of that, you put green, green economy, developing countries around the world need a lot of infrastructure, copper, nickel, zinc, predominantly go into that. Then green economy with all the stuff like wind turbines, for example, inside copper, outside zinc, coated with zinc. And then where does it go? To a nickel battery. You know, like so, any way you look at it, we need more. So, and the recent political situation around the world that we know now, separation of East and West, tells you how important it is to rely on something on our own turf in North America here. So that's where we come. We are not an exploration, we're more in the development stage at, at this right now. So we're the Canada's next uh, zinc and copper mine. Um, in Ontario, so a great place to be with the with the strategy that the Ontario government and of course with the the support of the Ontario government, you know. Um, so Terry, I, I I have to I'm almost going to make you the the ESG favorite here. I understand you're doing something kind of interesting, uh, moving power nickel forward. Would you like to comment on that and the appeal to the ESG market? with this group of critical materials because there's some big money out there and you're looking for a good place to invest. How about the exploration to near-term production critical materials? Uh, Terry, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I mean, we were just chatting off screen before we get on. Uh, I was just saying that, you know, for our ex upcoming exploration program, we're going to do a, a carbon offset program. So, uh, you know, we don't, at this stage, create a lot of carbon emission as an explorer, pretty limited. But it's all about the philosophy about you know what you're trying to do going forward and trying to be, you know, put a more friendly face on mining because we got a we had a bad rap from a lot of people for, you know, being you know you know anti environmentalist which is most ridiculous. The, the uh, you know Canadian mining is the best. We really restore things exactly back to where they used to be. So I feel we have to be uh, proactive as miners to show that we're part of the program. So we'll be buying an, an official carbon offset for our drilling. Won't be much. It'll be like. At this stage, probably in the five to ten thousand uh, dollars cost for us, but it'll be a, a. I think it's called Vera certified. It's sort of like the. It's like Intel inside. It's the brand that you got to have if you're going to do it, and that'll offset our, our diesel that we use in our drilling program. And I think it's these small steps that we can all take as we're sort of growing our deposits and as we're sort of sort of moving forward to show that hey, we're not only you know you know walking the walk, we're talking the talk. You know what I mean? We're we're, we're demonstrating with you know how we're going to move forward as a as an industry. And you know when we're looking at at developing you know you know as our deposit and moving it into a mine, we're lucky in that we're a 
across the road from a major hydro Quebec substation. So we can see really getting to be a, like a, you know, a very uh, low carbon, maybe a no carbon uh, impact uh, mine, and that's what we want to shoot for. And I think that uh, provides leadership. So just to wrap this up, because I know everybody here has a very demanding schedule, my favorite question that I like to ask is what is the one point you want to make about your company that you wish people would ask you? Okay. <laughs> There's one thing that you love about your company that's your favorite. And Karen, I suspect from Talon Research that you know exactly what that answer is. Yeah, we are very close to production. So like, we are very, very excited to come in where the demand is growing and the production is slowing down. Uh, which is zinc and copper as well. So great location. I love the local people like our chief uh, of the traditional territory we're in is here with me uh, at, at our, you know, supporting us uh, as well as local communities. We're very, very excited about that. And Terry, what about you? What about Power Nickel? What is the one thing you wish people would let you talk more about? I think uh, the big thing for us is we're actually a lot closer to, to being a commercial deposit than people think. I think we're going to, you know, shock people with their, our, uh, you know, our updated resource, and I think that's uh, that's what the message we want to get out. It's not just exploration. We're we're about to move into development, so it's a, it's a real story. And of course, Jamie from Fjordland, it's exploration. What do you wish people well, knew about you? Well, I think it's just our philosophy. Our philosophy is to look for base metals, nickel, copper, and because you know, I think that those projects can get developed. Um, I think when we're talking about mining, and we've t Terry's talking about ESG, um, we need to make sure that we're developing things that people need, that young people need. They have their cell phones, they need these metals, and, they, and it's just educating and letting people know that th these are important metals and there's, a, there's a, a, a quid pro quo, you know, we can get these things developed, we can do it in an in a environmentally friendly method, but you have to recognize that we need these metals to grow our economy and to, and to be where we want to be in the future. And we have to get young people to get involved and in, invested in mining. And that's, that's the message that we're trying to you know, carry on. I think we can get things developed by looking at these types of metals, as opposed to, say, precious metals and other things. And what about you, Claudia, with Kodiak Copper? Well, Kodiak has a high-grade copper discovery with real size potential in a great accessible district in, in southern BC. But if I had to highlight one point, I would highlight the team. The company was founded and is chaired by Chris Taylor, whom many of your audience will know from our sister company, Great Bear, which he also founded and made into a great discovery success. And Chris is a very talented, very out-of-the-box thinking geologist, which was instrumental to, to Great Bear's success and is as instrumental to, to Kodiak's success. So an exploration company is always as good as the geological brain behind it and I feel very fortunate to be working with Chris who is really a fantastic geologist and copper expert actually. So everybody out there, thank you for joining us at PDAC 2022. This is the Critical Materials panel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Great to be here. Thanks.